<laughs> yes, it hit 20 degrees here. And it's actually sort of staying there. I can wear shorts. I still haven't turned on the AC. It's it's perfect temperature time. I love it. It's getting close to 30s here. Is that 30 freedom units or freedom? No, that was 30 you people units. Wow. Okay. Uh, no, it's weird. What is that in freedom units? 80s, 90s? Yeah, yeah like 85 something. Yeah, it was, it yeah, was about that hot yesterday. Week. Yeah, you're in Texas though, aren't you? Yep. Does it ever drop below there? <laughs> Probably <laughs> not night. often, but when it does, it does so in a big way. Well, nobody's here is used to the cold, so when it snows around here, I'm not going out on the roads. The rare, rare few times it ever happens. Yeah, yeah people in told Texas this story cannot before, but I, self drives like a retard in the snow. Well, I probably told the story before, but I was in San Antonio once during an ice storm, and this is the kind that makes New Englanders think maybe I shouldn't go outside. Yeah, they like four trucks fell off the highway. Okay, yeah, <laughs> ice storms are just a bad time for anybody. I wouldn't drive in an ice storm, but... Yeah, no, but now now people who've never seen ice in the wild before. Which admittedly might explain a lot about why they decided to drive in it. Probably. Yes. Good tires. They stay all weather. Yeah, I was They're down in Houston once for Christmas when it snowed, and uh, people just had no clue. It's like three quarters of an inch. Yeah, that's yeah, like just so enough early. to make driving west fun. Yeah. What do you mean we drive like retards? We got yeah, places like to be. Mean. Yeah, but none of you know that you have to like slow down and not be stupid. No, we don't. I mean, unless there's some other kind of condition, it's go, go, go. Slowing down is for somebody who is not in a hurry. No, you gotta keep in mind, so in Texas, you can drive for 90 miles and literally not see anything that you could run into. It's Hence why we're in a hurry. We, it takes us a lot longer to get places. I remember driving, from, when, I, when I went to San Antonio, the next day I drove out towards El Paso. It's like a six-hour drive, and there was, you know, sand. Good old West Texas. Of course, and it gets everywhere. Like, you couldn't crash if you wanted to. There was nothing to hit. So, fun note, from Houston, I'm. it takes me 12 hours to get to El Paso, which means I'm not even out of the state. Wait, you're in Houston? Houston? Yes, in Houston, from Houston. Oh, yes, yeah, so this was when it snowed a few years ago around Christmas time in Houston. Um, the most recent one? I'm not sure when was the most recent one. This would have been early mid 2000s. Yes, that would be the most recent one. <laughs> yeah, so that would be the most recent one, and that's why no one knows how to do oh my anything. God. Well, that's why, because like we were saying earlier, it's happened so rarely. It is an event. I'm never moving to Texas. Well, if you don't it's like the snow, wonderful. It's great. The winter when it's 70 freedom units, probably 20s. I like winter here though. Crazy person. See, we can do stuff outside during I the winter. Concur. It's open we. we and don't we don't have to shovel snow. Hey, shoveling snow builds character, I'll have you know. Yeah, right, and Calvin if you got hit so with, with a truncheon every oh, week, you'd start oh. talking about how happy it made you when you weren't being hit with a truncheon. Wait, I'm sorry. I completely missed the part of that that, end, that ended with truncheon. Okay, so if you got hit upside the head with a truncheon every week, you'd start making up rationalizations about why it was good to be hit by a truncheon. It builds character. You know, it makes you happier on the days you're not getting hit by a truncheon, that sort of thing. You go uphill both ways in the snow. We liked it!
It's really just really four Yorkshiremen. You know, I have no response to that thing about being hit by a truncheon. I got nothing. Would you like to know more? No, no. I'm uh, I'm good without knowing more about being hit in the head by truncheons. Thank you. I've had enough. Most of it's not about being hit in the head by truncheons. Yes, I know. That's just so once the a week. The party we're going. <laughs> yes. 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 So this party. Um, so last session, you guys left. You guys kicked the shit out of Fire Giant and Tribor. Um, you spent a while setting up for that. Um, you got into the lovely city of Yartar. Uh, Ned talked to some people that he knew in the city. Um, they pointed him to the um, to the current ruler of the city, the Water Baron. And she pointed you guys towards a man by the name of Caspier Dryland, um, who is a secretly a member of the Kraken Brotherhood. Um, he's holding a bunch of parties on his private boat by the name of the Grand Dame, um, in which he's attempting to suborn um, nobles of the city and the surrounding area to him so that he can take over as the water baron of the city. Um, right. So, Rich, what are you going to tell us that she has uh, wants us to actually do about that? <laughs> She wants us to go to a man about a thing on a boat. She wants you to, I think she was kind of vague and just said do something about it. Um, she'd like for you to disrupt him in some way. Um, disrupt him, uh, disrupt his party, get her information about him that she doesn't already have. Um, Get her proof that he's in the Kraken Brotherhood. You can try and kill him too. I appreciate the well, for nothing. try here. Um, but seeing him they get proof that he's in the Kraken Brotherhood, how does that exactly hurt him? They generally have decent PR. Um she's rather vague about the details. The Kraken Brotherhood doesn't have the greatest PR here. They're okay in Waterdeep um, and along the coast, uh, but around, like, the further inland you go, the more distrustful people are of people telling them about how much they love the sea, if that makes sense, and how they should, you know, go back to the sea and be part of it and stuff. Right, so they're weird and foreign, but... Yeah. So the okay. Kraken Brotherhood is weird and foreign around here, basically. She can use that. Um, she also mentioned that there is a... Um, she's, that there is a um, fucking Disciple of the Yellow King temple in town. Um and that she suspects some connection there between Dryland and the uh, and the dudes and the disciples. Um, if you wanted to go look in there instead, um, they are normally the temple is normally empty while Dryland is holding his parties. Correction: apparently empty. Apparently empty. It seems to be empty. Sorry, I missed a step here. What seems to be empty? Um, so there's a... Uh... Oh, right. Oh. Um, so there's this group called the Disciples of the Yellow King um, that are... Hmm, you guys haven't actually had that many dealings with them yet. Um, but basically... Yeah, the name's creepy. I remember, in character, we know that Lord Nobone, who is our direct patron for the Lord's Alliance, 
does not like them. Um, yes. We met some on the, the Flying Castle, and they were kind of creepy. But in the way, like, like Elizabeth Whitney sees, or Mormons are creepy. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're not, like, threatening uh, creepy, but, like, I don't want to be around this guy. Also, they propositioned uh, our cloud giant cloud friend, friend, and then... Oh, yeah. and then uh, when you um, say proposition... <laughs> not in the way you're thinking. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Not, not in the same <laughs> way. Yeah, that's my job. No, but they wanted to make a deal with him, and he was for their not impressed. Yeah, he was not impressed, and then also I think like I remember he went up to like after he got the thing, he went up. He said he wasn't like gonna try to talk to the person. Then he ended up unconscious. Yeah, yeah. they're they're like vague, to to this party. They're vaguely suspicious. Now, out of character, character, yeah. <laughs> Out of, but... Yeah, out of character, uh, the disciples of the Yellow King were up to some sketchy shit uh, last campaign. Um, which is a matter for another time. Um, it's uh, I think it's a bit too long to get into now. In character, they're a creepy new religious group. They're creepy, but Ildahar, um, genuine, when you guys tried to incite Ildahar um, about his intentions when he was talking to Zephros, he seemed completely sincere about wanting to help people. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is like they're best known for charity work. Yeah. Their big thing is like they help and feed the homeless um, and the downtrodden people. Best thing to hide behind, just like that priest. I think it uh, says. Something. I think it says something about the adventures that were. I have to ask which priest. The one back in uh, Jake's campaign. Okay. Yep. Are they widespread? Are they what? Yes. Are, are they in every city, basically? Basically, um, most of the rulers are kind of creeped out by them for varying reasons. Uh, so they try and limit their influence, but they can't really stop people who are just coming in and feeding the homeless. So. Well, they could, but they not make people very happy. happy. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing too is if they're, as far as Yarter, they're all over the Sword Coast region. Yeah. They are literally all over the place. I am thinking at some point there is a good chance that I have interacted with them while I was interfacing between druids and city people and keeping homeless people from roaming randomly through the woods and getting eaten by things or <laughs> eating things. Yeah, actually, there probably would be a decent chance you would have done, you would have interacted with them at that point. See, that's preventing poor homeless bears from getting a fresh meal. <laughs> You're not wrong. No. No, you are not wrong. Um, anyhow, the Disciples of the Yellow King and their, their shenaniganery, I'll try and write something up about them um, and post it in Discord or something over the next week. For now, um, game time. The other thing that you guys were doing in Yartar was you were trying to uh, find your way east um, towards Everland. So um, Adriel, I believe, came up with the idea of heading down the river um, to Shadow Top Cathedral which is a major druid enclave um, in the north. So... I think I was in the process of making arrangements, but I didn't know how long, like when the next boat was not... Um, the next boat is actually in a couple of days. It turns out, uh, when you go asking around, 
that there you are not the only person who's thought of doing this to get around the undead. Um, there are a few merchants who are um, who've set up a partnership with the Druid Enclave at Shadowtop Cathedral, the em Emerald Enclave, um, and they're working with the Druids to bring supplies through the forest and safely up to um, safely around the edges of the Undead Plague. Okay, so they're probably supplying calling horns and norn. Norn horns. Yeah. Okay. Sir. They'd, they'd be stopping at Nonar's Hold along the way. Calling Horns is kind of cut off at this point um, for the time being. You'd have to break through the undead to get to it. Um, Nonar tries sending a party down to the ford. Sorry? Well, I don't know what their capability is uh, in a military sense. But certainly, they could hypothetically send a party down to the ford uh, if they could break the line and attempt to get goods in. The spot right there, it's kind of obvious. Which means if the, intel the undead have any intelligent commanders, they're probably blocking it, though. <laughs> um. Yeah, Calling Horns is not a big place. Calling Horns is like a village. A decade ago, it was basically just a trailside inn. Um, so it's it's got enough to protect itself, but not enough to withstand like dedicated incursions or um, mount an actual offensive. You know from listening to rumors last session as well that there are um, knights from some of the eastern cities that are going along the road and fighting undead. Whether or not any of them are near calling horns, though, nobody knows. Do you know how long it would take to get from Yartar to Shadowtop, and then from Shadowtop to Everland? Um, Yartar to Shadowtop, probably th four days. Uh, Shadowtop to Everland, call that 90 miles, so another... Oh, you guys are mounted now, aren't you? We are. Yep. So even at half speed, that's probably only three days. Yeah, we don't get lost, but we got a drug. Yeah, that's three days. You'll be going through forest, um, so call it three days. So, hey guys, there we go. Why don't we just go to Everland, see about getting uh, some some magic, then immediately pop back into Yartar and go partying. At least, as far as we know, the help that we could get would be, like, teleport-type stuff, from what we were told by Thwip. I'm sorry, are you waiting for me to confirm or deny that? Possibly. <laughs> Unless I'm totally off from what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if Flip specified anything. All, all I can remember he told you is that it was just a way for you to move around um, the region extremely quickly. Well, that would be. Yeah, all, all we know is it's travel and it's quick, quicker than walking. So. Much quicker than walking. So the point stands. Yeah. yeah, getting there for that's why getting there is kind of a priority for us, is because once we do that, it'll make it much easier to do other things and go anywhere else. Yeah. But if the next boat doesn't leave for a couple of days, we have time to help out this uh, Mary Lady. If she thinks that's a good idea, depending on depending when on this party is, these parties are happening too. Uh, 
right. Uh, yeah, Rich, you are. You have left um, the Water Baron's office. You're back in the city. You can go meet up with the party and share your information with them if you want. Yes. So, so yeah, yeah, go back to the party. All right. Um, yeah. So y'all have all of that information. Um, so there is there is a party uh, tomorrow night. Um, there is the next ship out to um, that goes that's going along the river to resupply is heading out the next morning. So nobody yet too hungover. We've got a bug look at. Looking at you, Sil. How much is too much? Well, you have to be able to get onto a boat, so... I mean, not that I plan to go so far, but I've seen sailors laden on boats and they weren't moving at all. She does have a point. You just have to be able to make it to the boat. To the boat chanting too hard. Okay, get ready for the party, I guess. All right. So you have about a day and a half to prepare for the party. What do people want to, uh, what are we, what are you doing in preparation? Well, some people need a makeover at this point. <laughs> Polish my skin. All right. Um, yeah, you probably have the stuff for polishing your skin on hand, Docs. <laughs> this would make it a point to uh, kind of go around uh, getting uh, getting some performances under a belt and basically making yourself, uh, I guess, prom self promotion basically for since entertainers are very much a sort of thing that nobles would get for parties. So she's making herself a, a commodity. Okay. You'll need to figure out what counts as fashionable. All right. Um, so I'm hearing polish, makeover, uh, perform all around, figure out what's fashionable. Rich, you got anything you want to do to get ready to parte? Also figure Probably out what this guy likes. Well, yeah, I was going to go say, go ask around or talk around and see if I can get any inside information about what's going to happen or what all is going to go on. All right. Yeah. Maybe in loader, loiter near the boat a bit to see if I can get any intel that way, too. Or pay someone, someone else to do it. That would probably be the better way. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it makes sense. I can All see right, him getting out the uh, door and walking three steps before having that thought. I should go watch the boat. Step, step, step. I should pay someone to watch the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sil, you got anything you want to do? Well, uh, along with finding out what counts as fashionable, I'd like to get a nice outfit made. Okay. All right. So, um, Ox, you can. You have a day and a half to work. You can polish the shit out of your 
out of your skin. You look shiny and impressive. Um, yeah, you look shiny and beautiful, and you are every girl's dream warforged. Um, all right, finding out what counts as fashionable around here. Um, where the fuck did my notes go? All right. Um, so Yartar is mostly the... Oh, yeah, no. Uh, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, all right. So Yartar is mostly the same set of... Mostly the same fashion as the... Uh, as the rest of the um, as the rest of the north, primary colors around here are green and gold, are what they wear. Um, the make a make an investigation check, I guess. Anybody who's trying to. Find out about fashion. I don't need to investigate for that. I'm always casual. Wow. wow. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Debating if I want to use my inspiration for this. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't need a full day and a half. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out an investigation as well. All right. Yeah. Um, Ox, you can <laughs> tell people that um, the big fashion in particular at uh, Lord Drylon's parties are his um, snakes. They, for whatever reason, they really, really like... Um, Yes, snakes. They really like stuff that has snakes and on them. Apparently, that's fashion around here. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> the thing is, I'm not even kidding. This is actually written. This is great. I have scales. Well, I was going to say, I mean, so like we can just like summon a few like live snakes, right? You guys can just like wear an anaconda. It's fine. Gives a whole new meaning to wearing a boa. Actually, Adriel and I both have scales. That works great. We are. Beings. Or it's the original definition of wearing a boa. Maybe. I would not want to wear that kind of boa, though. Just Keep because they're probably be fine. They're friendly. It's fine. Don't care if they're friendly or not. Um, I mean, I care, but... Yeah. I could polymorph someone and get them into the party like that. This is why I have disguise self. <laughs> so you can use me? If I need to be. I don't think this guy very is very a lady dressed in snakes. Somehow. Uh, Somehow. I mean, you can you can do that. It. Uh. All right. Like it would be just off. snakes. No, it should be just snakes. Like one cleverly wrapped around, or just multiple. There are fey versions of any natural creature. Yes. Yep. <laughs> All right, um, so we had polishing skin. We had what counts as fashionable. Um, inks you wanted to go around and perform to see what uh, perform. To see if she could basically get on the, uh, on the performers list for this party. Okay. Um, you do only have like 
a night of performing. You know that, right? Yeah, but she thinks. Yeah, and she's also like an entertainer by things. So she, basically, some people who might come through here might already recognize her, like nobles who have seen her in other cities. Um. Yeah. Roll performance. Roll. Uh, roll a trio of performance checks. Actually, if you try hard enough, you can probably hit a bunch of uh, a bunch of inns around town. Is there such thing as passive performance? Because that'd be great. I'm gonna say no. Why do they hate me so much? All right. You have one performance, one awesome performance, and one mediocre one. The first one was a warm up. The second one was all in. The third one was it's been a long night. Yeah. So she was mostly uh, mingling after performing the rest of the time to get in the charm that way. No, that's fair. Um, So you are not approached. Um, you are not approached to be a performer, um, but you recognize enough people, and you get enough compliments from wealthy, from people who appear to be wealthy um, members of the city. You you you'll probably have an easier time getting in. I'll take it. Um, all right. Rich and uh, Rich and somebody else were looking at finding out what's go what's uh, going on at the party. Um, so any casual investigation will turn up that um, the party. One of the main things that goes on at uh, at Lord Dryland's parties is actually gambling. Dude loves to gamble, and he's got basically his own little casino uh, set up on board his ship. Complete, in fact, with his own like gambling chips. Um, so that's the main thing. They... Uh, eats, he feeds everybody who comes, um, they gamble, they dance, and they schmooze. Rule investigation to get anything more than that. Yeah. All right. Um, Rich, you, uh, your six does not get you anything, unfortunately. Um, Inks, neither does your seven. Um, Ox, you hear, um, yeah. Ox, you hear about, good God, why can nobody roll a skill check tonight? You're asking us to do int. <laughs> Not only that, we're rolling like up to six. Wait, wait, where's the cat? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the cat's adorable enough. He can try. Can't do worse than us. One sec, I gotta find this shit. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> he doesn't even have a positive modifier to this. All right. Um, so Ox, you and Relix together find 
um, the name of uh, of Lord Dryland's security officer. Um, her name is Pao Ming. She is a mage, um, and she is responsible for um, keeping order and for distributing ships um, in the casino. She's basically his pit boss. Um, and she's been known to use her magic to keep order around here. Mm -hmm. Or on the boat. That's uh, that's all you got, though, unfortunately. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm kind of curious about the other players in town. Is there anyone else who might want to see him embarrassed? Hmm. Good question. I would be interested in that as well. I want to know who all is going to be at this party. Yeah. Yeah, okay. go ahead um, my contact. Okay, so you're going to hit up your contact. Um, oh, your contact's the one with the squeaky voice, right? Yep. Are you sure you want to hit him up? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I, knew, I know how much you liked him. Um, all right. So... Uh, your contact can tell you, Oh, yeah, the Water Baron would sure love to see Lord Trowland embarrassed. That would be great for her. There's also, uh, there's a couple members of the Lord's Alliance from other cities dropping in, too, I think. Uh, there's a few deputies, a few just general nobles from around as well. <laughs> 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 Doesn't that go? I feel like that goes against the course of nature or something. There is yeah, that, but one sometimes make, it's just necessary. There's I'm that sorry, one spell. Isn't, that like, isn't voice awake like in different. a spell? There's thaumaturgy that makes your voice different. Yeah, that one. It's only temporary, though. That's true. You could just keep casting it on him, though. I think it's a cantrip. I mean, you're not you're wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyhow, your contact can also point you towards uh, the local thieves' guild, actually, um, would be happy to see him embarrassed. They don't like him. Um, they're called the Hand of Yartar, and they're notorious for being all female. Odds are decent that they that they'll send somebody, at least to the uh, to the party. They're definitely who I was looking for. As it stands, we don't know anything about how strong this guy is, except strong enough to be someone of power in the city. With a mage as his pit boss, so... But I mean, it's not like it's an important city. It's a council member of the Lord's Alliance. It's not nowhere. Yeah. It's it's a it's a member of the Lord's Alliance. It's situated on a major like rip fork in the river, basically, that allows it to be um, to send goods basically all over the region. Um, it's not nowhere. It's on a major road. If the uh, if the undead plague wasn't fucking so much shit up, it'd be like a major passway from. Uh, from Waterdeep and Neverwinter over to the eastern cities. 
It's not nowhere. Yeah, it's just kind of cut off by the hordes and hordes and hordes of undead. Yep. My point is, uh, I would like... I would not like to find out firsthand just how much power he can wield when put to it. I would rather find out by having him hit someone else who hit him first. So I'm wondering if we can help their plan along without uh, exposing ourselves directly. Because you don't want us exposing ourselves. (laughs) I mean, Ox seems to enjoy it, so... What kind of party is this again? <laughs> are we are we not doing phrasing anymore? <laughs> Danger zone. <laughs> All right. Um. So you want you want to make contact with the local thieves guild? basically, and see what they're doing to, uh, and see what they're doing to fuck with Lord Dryland, slash see what they knew. I mean, they're unlikely to tell me personally. Here's a question. Uh, yeah. in this city, is there a place that might sell a ring of mild mind shielding? It's uncommon. It's uncommon. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, Funnily enough, the best way for you to find that would probably be to talk to the local thieves guild. Um, one thing at a time. Sil, what is your plan right now? What what are you looking to do with these people? Well, my understanding uh, from what I remember of what was indirectly explained to me from last week is that the goal here is embarrass this lord, yes? Basically, yeah. Embarrass him, be hashtag disruptive. Right, and that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, us personally tipping over the smorgasbord. Getting someone to tip over the smorgasbord is just as good. And perhaps a little better because it doesn't get posters shot at us. (laughs) <laughs> True. So you want to find a patsy? Essentially. I mean, the thing about patsy is it kind of implies that it's the sort of thing that they weren't inclined to do already. But I wanted to look in the first place for people who wanted to see him taken down a peg in the first place, so... Okay. Um... You have to find them. None of you have thieves can't. Can my Do your contact you could, could point you in the right direction for sure. Um, anybody who wants to look for the neighborhood for the friendly neighborhood thieves guild, um, roll investigation. Your contact can point you in the right direction, but he can't tell you exactly who. Okay, yes, he can. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. All righty. They're they're like right over there. It's like there's a sign. (laughs) Yeah, there's just a little building across the street from the inn you've been meeting him in. Says, uh... Says hands of Yartar or hand of Yartar at the top of it. Oh, that place. 
Yeah. Huh, who knew? Apparently you didn't before. Um, but yeah, so you found the Thieves Guild. You can walk in. Um, it seems kind of like an office. Not very uh, not very Thieves Guildy. There's a woman at the front at um, a front desk watching who comes in. Um, behind there is a large partition um, that blocks the rest of the room from view. The woman at the front desk looks up as you enter Ox, as not Ox, Rich. Um, I'm surprised I haven't mixed that up before. Looks up at you as you enter Rich um, and asks, can I help you? Did anybody come with me? I come. Okay. Yeah, anybody who wants to meet the Thieves Guild can follow along. Do we have a name of anyone here, or is it just kind of the guild? Uh, you, you don't have a name for anybody. You could. You don't have a name for anybody in the guild right now. Um, it's just the guild itself is the hand of Yartar. That's all you know right now. I'd like to somehow casually kind of mention that I'm looking for a helping hand with a certain person, specifically with a boat, with a casino on it. She raises a, yeah, that's subtle. Uh, she raises an eyebrow. What kind of hand might you be looking for? I guess I would kind of depend on what can be offered but basically something to make him have less than a pleasant day. In a way, it doesn't sound like we're trying to get him killed. So you'd like him to have a pleasant day, for him to not have a pleasant day, but for him to still have a day after... Yes. What are you prepared to offer? What are you looking for? Gold always works. Favors too. You're where you're. Uh... Well, you're a harper, aren't you? You should know the deal. I'm assuming this is the ring, and so I actually have no fire, no clue what the actual deal is. This is the ring. Um, she, she's not referring to a specific deal. Right. I mean, but it's kind of a standard deal for that. And she's implying that you've been around and you understand the way of the world. No. Yeah, I got that. I'd say something like, um, yes, but I'd just like to make sure everybody's perfectly clear on the deal. So if you would like to tell me how, how you think the deal goes, just so we can make sure that we both agree on the details. The deal is that we're perfectly willing to help you, provided we get compensated. You're a harper. Even if you yourself don't, you should have... You should have even if you don't have the money yourself, you should be able to access it. Or at least to point out, you should be able to point us towards some people who might be willing to listen to our concerns. If you get what I mean. Yes. How much can how many concerns are we talking about here? Oh, 
for this, nothing, nothing too major. Um, your, uh, tell you what, put in a good word for us with the uh, with the water baron and get us uh, call it three hundred gold. And we'll see about making sure that he has a that uh, our friend with the boat with the casino has a bad day. Let's go with two fifty, and I can absolutely put in a good word for you. Wait. Let's do two fifty, and I will absolutely put in a good word for you. No, roll persuasion. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Do you have inspiration? No, I don't. She kind of looks at you approvingly. You got Moxie. And you're pretty too. But pretty heart doesn't pretty face doesn't quite do it for me at these days. Three hundred is. Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. She raises an eyebrow. What's the name of the, the water baron we met here? Uh, yeah, okay. okay. Nestra. Mr. Nestra? No, her name was uh, Nestra Ruthinol. Ruthiol? Yeah. Yeah, so Frostrick. All right, mister. Pleasure doing business with you. We'll, uh, the next party's tomorrow night. Are you... Yes, we will be there. Okay. Would I have been able to ask, uh, Rich to ask about item for me? Uh, what am I asking about? Ring of mind shielding, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Do I would you ask. Don't trust me. You would. Uh, you can ask these guys. The thieves guild. Yes, I would. All right. Um, she raises an eyebrow. You need something short notice? I get take it. What would not be defined as short notice? Yeah, true. Um, you know what? You're even uh, you're doing something. You're helping us out already. So call it two hundred gold for the ring. That'd be fine. Okay. All right, that'll work. All right. She. Uh, she reaches into a drawer in her desk and pulls out a ring of mind shield and hands it to Rich. Here you go. There's just a box full of them that in there. They're trinkets. They're, uh, they're a very useful item around here. That's what I figured. Especially with gambling boats going around. Good to know. I'll meet you on the boat um, tomorrow night. My name. <laughs> My name is Jane Rowe to you. Okay. <laughs> I'll find you guys, or you. All right, sounds good. Pleasure doing business with you, sir. And you. She nods.
All right. So I'll bring mind shielding. Um, figure out who's going to be at said party. All right. Um, roll investigation with advantage, Adriel. Okay. Um, so you know that there are a couple of nobles. Um, there's a couple of nobles who've come down the river from Nonar's Hold who are alleged to be attending the party. Um, for the most part, however, the, uh, the names that you get are pretty well-known um, shipping families in town. Um, I can give you some specific names if you want. I mean, Adriel would want them, but... Yeah, fair. Prominent uh, shipping families, got it. Yeah, um, so yeah, a bunch of merchant families. Um, basically, Yartar holds elections for their leader. Um, Dryland is trying to stuff the, uh, they hold limited elections. Dryland is trying to stuff the ballot, is trying to bribe um, or cajole anybody who can be bribed or cajoled into voting for him in the event of an election. So, you know, wealthy merchant families get votes. If your election lasts more than five hours, consider controlling your doctor. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that's everything that people want. Pretty to much. Uh, have, I, have I missed anything? So. No, I'm good. All right. So, you know, I'll, I'll try and my uh, uh, jacket with a the snake theme on it. Okay. Um, it's not too hard to find. Uh, it's pretty. It's um, the jacket that you end up finding is pretty finely made. It's silk. It's green and gold with uh, serpents embroider on on it. Um, costs you probably f uh, fifteen gold to buy it and get it fitted. Um, with a rush job. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to buy clothes? I was planning to buy an outfit, yes. All right. Um, probably same deal. Rush job for fitting plus well made clothing, about 15 gold. That's reasonable. I might have There's some party in here, quality. so that sort of thing. All right. Um, Sorry, I keep trying to click my character sheet, and I. Uh, please tell me you're not Shalai Hying. Shale How are the fuck that? Shalali. Shalaliing, the shopkeeper. No, I am not Shalaliing the shopkeeper. I just clicked on my character sheet. Good. Trying to get out the money for her. <laughs> Fear God. <laughs> What sort of character do you think I'm playing? I don't know. I've been surprised before. Hmm. I think instead of focusing specifically on like clothing with uh, 
snakes directly on it. I think she might have like a few accessories that might be something like that. Plus her necklace of the dragon scales. Plus with her regular scales, she might be able to like make up some makeup to look a little more serpentine. That's gonna be her thing. She's gonna look hella pretty. All right. I don't know what sort of check there is for makeup, so I'm just going to say you pass it. You look hella pretty. <laughs> she, she knows her makeup. <laughs> Understandable. Does anybody else want to look hella pretty before, uh, before the party? Do the whole thing with some fishnets and make it, it look... But... I'd go for more of a hella handsome, but, you know. I already mentioned mm -hmm. polishing myself. Yes. You already look hella pretty, Ox. You are the shiniest fucking robot of... The shiniest you are the shiniest robot, robot for hundreds of miles around. I'm probably the only robot for hundreds of miles around. That too, but... <laughs> <detailed. laughs> I figure also uh, not wearing exactly what's popular here also makes her more exotic. <laughs> True. Putting it on her body <laughs> instead. All right. Um, yeah, Rich, you can probably same price for you um, to get fancy ass clothes. How much yeah, was that? Anybody who wants to, uh, fifteen gold for rush job plus well made clothing. Alright, yeah. Anybody who wants to can be made hella pretty. Um, inks, you'll have to take some time to attune to your uh, ring of mind shielding at some point. Yeah, we'll do that over the night. I believe their attunement. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Um... Any other last-minute party preparations? Everybody's pretty. You have your clothes. You have the information you've been able to dig up. Correct. Do you want to say them out loud? No. Okay. Uh, I was hoping to get all of this typed out before I started interrupting things, and you could have the whole thing to read, but then it's fine. There's... Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'll... Get Essentially, into... does it have an upper bound? And no. What does it look like? From what I recall, Helms of Telepathy looks stupid as fuck. They can Fantastic. look like whatever the creator wants, but they tend towards the ostentatious. Um... So not really party garb because it looks dumb. I mean, uh, you could you could buy a very handsy, uh, a very, did I just say very? <laughs> yes, you did. Very fancy hat of telepathy if you really wanted. Yeah, wearing a helmet to the party would probably not go over well. Yeah, likely has a uh, cost that is more than I can afford at this time. The cost of a very fancy hat of telepathy would be the same as the cost of a helm of telepathy. Well, yes, but I already have the helm of telepathy. Do a trade! Hey, remember that time when you got a very fancy hat of telepathy instead of a helm of telepathy? Fantastic. Yay! Honestly, helms of telepathy look stupid as fuck. I didn't shoot. I wasn't sure how much variance from the... Uh... Rules is written on magic items you would go, so... 
it's the same thing, just looks prettier. Um, but yeah, it is a very fancy hat. It has like a big feather sticking out of it and a nice wide brim, and it's uh, it's multicolored and everything. It is a very large and very fancy hat. Nice. It's like, oh yeah, the helm of helm of brilliance is that like I... dazzle, isn't it? it, it yeah, it's, it's the one. It's like a full samurai helmet, but completely encrusted in whatever gems they could find. Sounds about right. Um... But it shoots lasers, so you know. <laughs> yeah. And when it mocks your fashion sense, you can shoot lasers at them. Yeah, I imagine the adventurers in the shop taking a look at it like, it is the most god-awfully gaudiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but if anyone says anything about that, you can laser them. If there was a pink ribbon of immortality, everyone would wear a pink ribbon. Thanks, Advent children. Oh, fuck. I'm thinking it's party time now. Okay, so I just accidentally dropped two uh, of the same picture. Oh, it's that dude. Uh, yeah, that dude. You see that hat he's wearing? That's basically what I'm picturing your very fancy hat as. It's a good hat. It's a good hat. He's going to stay there for a little while because I like him. Uh, but for now, you guys are not. In fact, you are all going to the party. Oh, yeah. Totally wearing that hat. All right. So um, you are all coming up the docks to um, the Grand Dame, the boat that this party is being held on. Um, it's very ornately decorated on the outside. Uh, at the far end of the docks, you see what looks to be a uh, a grizzled-looking older man. Um, he is dressed up in a uh, in some nice clothes, but he uh, he sure looks like a bouncer. So a suit that almost fits. Basically. So is it just poorly, well, I guess poorly isn't the right word, but it kind of looks like he's been stuffed into it. Yeah. Um, what are you guys doing for weapons right now, actually? I would probably have all my weapons put away except for the dagger. Which is just when you say put away, do you yeah, mean put away. in the bag of holding? Are you carrying the uh, bag of holding with you? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Ox. Uh, Ox, you are a weapon. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess you're the only one who really carries open weapons, aren't you, Adriel? Pretty much. Okay. I have um, a long sword, but it's more for because it fits the look than anything else. Okay. Are you I wearing have a number of things that I am not necessarily carrying with me, so. Okay. Are you. The question right now is, are you wearing them openly? Is it illegal to? Because it kind of goes with the whole thing. It's not illegal. You're adventurers. Uh, but... I mean, they didn't the skin the when we came to town. Yeah. Um, like, they didn't say anything about it when you came to town. But uh, the bouncer may not take kindly to them. 
then I would leave the longsword behind. All right. I'll split the bag of holding. Or that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair, actually. Um, all right. I mean, are you just accepting anything to put in the bag of holding? And how likely is the bouncer to be vexed by a wand that is not particularly in and of itself magical? Still a he doesn't seem, be my guess. He doesn't seem too intelligent necessarily. I mean, I'm assuming he's gonna let the dagger go because asking people to go unarmed is a bit much. But we shall see. All right. Um, kind of wondering if wand tricks are a thing. Not magic, just like uh, spinning it and walking it along your fingers and stuff like that. Like pen tricks? Yeah. Oops, exactly like tricks. pen tricks, but with sticks and with time and spend alone in the forest. I was thinking drum tricks. So, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Given sticks and boredom, people will find ways to twirl them. Um, yeah, so as you walk up towards our friend the bouncer, um, there are several other wealthy looking individuals. Who will who walk by you on their way into the ship? Mm. They have brief words with the uh, bouncer as they come up. He looks them over quickly and uh, then motions them <clears throat> by the gangplank into the ship. Are any of them bearing any kind of weapons? They are not. Okay. Inks is just like, as they're getting closer, she's just gonna totally put on and basically uh, get into her geisha character and just sort of jokingly lightly hang off of uh, Richard's arm. <laughs> just like basically be on his arm. And laugh as if he said something funny as I walk up. And I would totally be going along with this. All right. Um, and <clears throat> I would even go so much as to just start walking on, giving, not even paying the guard any attention. He, uh... As much as I love the Moxie, um, he roll persuasion. Actually, I can eight on that. that. Yeah. Let's see if you can uh, if you can straight up get away with this. Hmm. <laughs> yep. he, uh, he looks briefly confused as you and Inks walk by him but uh, he doesn't see any weapons on you um, seems legit yeah we totally yeah, we like we were supposed to be here so the remaining three of you are now on the dock with the bouncer in front of you. Yeah. Can we totally get away with the same thing? Yeah, if you're just, just gonna good. walk up, like give him a nod. Uh, roll persuasion. 
or deception. Can I assist him with persuasion? How would you assist him in this endeavor? I am going to obviously be his plus one. I'm, uh, I'm with them. Well, I'd be all female, so that would be weird. I uh, maybe. Hey, 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 don't judge. Or both. Yeah, unusual. Actually, I he, Adriel could be Adriel and Ars could both be. Sales arm candy. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I said the other way around. Ox gets the middle. Sills, just, uh, <laughs> what are you, are you pulling some Bruce Wayne shit? Just walk into the party with like four pieces of arm candy hanging off you. <laughs> like two two elves on like an elf on each arm. Each arm. Okay, I'm going to need you, if you want to do that, I'm going to need you to go back out and roll me a deception check. Because the guard is sure as shit going to challenge that. Um... Yeah. You haven't heard of the water tea boxes? Yeah. Oh, good God, he can't roll for shit. The fuck? Nice to know the curse affects NPCs as much as PCs. This much time with inks and still that prudish, come on. The ink is probably God making it worse. Damn it, Nelvin. You are the worst bouncer ever. The only reason this is working is because you're beating him by more than 10 every, by 10 or more every time. <laughs> Too damn pretty. <laughs> Too damn pretty. All right. So, Adriel manages to walk herself by the uh, the bouncer. But just leaves Ox and Siliqui. Yeah, uh... My charisma is shit. Oh. Oh, well, I can try and make a persuasion on her behalf. <laughs> Should've given Ox, like, a butler outfit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can persuade him or you can deceive him. Yeah, the uh, the I bouncer. Think I kinda... like to use my inspiration. Oh okay, yeah, sure. Fuck yeah! That is a perception <laughs> check. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, but the bonus. Oh, is bonus. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Who do you introduce yourself to him as? He'll stop oh, you and be like, hey, who are you? She's a diplomat. It's true. I often speak with the voice of the Druish, uh, Druish, Druidic, Druidic Council. Strange. She doesn't look Druish. We've already made that joke. Yeah, Rich has a Rich has a whole list of things. Damn. Yeah, the druids, the local druids are the Emerald Enclave. So you could totes pull that off. I am totes pulling that off. Yeah, you totes do that pull that off. Um Ah Didn't know the druids came here, but if you got the gold you're as welcome as anybody else here. He steps back, motions like, gives you a come in motion. He, uh, time to buy chips. Well, you're in luck, because that revealed room in front of you is, um, 
is in fact the dining room. So, Both kinds, kinds of chips. <laughs> oh, you meant gambling chips. Okay. Um, yeah, so if you had a couple doors down, I'll just reveal the whole, this deck of the boat. Um, so this room up here, if it'll let me ping, if not. This place is just full of, like, the hand of Yardar <laughs> ladies. Yeah, so up here is um, the dining room. Down here is a lovely kitchen. And this room down here um, is the casino. Um, there really is quite a lot of her. That's not all her. That's just the generic noble token that was on here when I got here. I was going to say, it's going to be finding her very difficult. No, no, they are, they are not her. She'll have a dot, probably. Once you find her. Um, yeah, where do you guys want to go? You have a kitchen, you have a place full of lovely food, and you have a place to gamble. All right. Oh, darling, the gambling hall. <laughs> Just pulling Rich through. All right, so yeah, this is uh, the gambling hall is basically just a ginormous cabin that's been transformed into a casino. Um, there's tables all over the place with various games going on. Um, there is a giant golden goose statue um, standing at the far end of it. Um, there's glasses of wine. Um, there are glasses of wine all over the place. On the far wall, from the Golden Goose, there's a very unflattering portrait of a fat, grinning man. Um, with a nameplate under it that leads that reads Lord Caspier Dryland. That's interesting. Um, yeah, anybody who's in here, give me a perception. Well, what do you guys want to do in the gambling hall? And follow-up question. Um, when the two tokens at the bottom of the room, do you guys see the names underneath them? I don't. Nope. Brilliant. Okay. That's good. I see dude one and dude two. That is a problem because one of them is a woman. The one on the right, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> that mustache just seems so feminine. Yeah, that's a girl's mustache if I ever saw one. It's a dwarf, mm -hmm. right? No, no. He's human. He is, um, he is human. But yeah, uh, far end of the room, you spot the same fat man uh, who was in the painting wandering around talking to people. Um, and you also spot a severe looking woman um, standing at the far end watching the gambling hall. Is your pit boss. So the people we were kind of expecting to find. Can't think of the name of it. There's always the uh, the cage where you, you exchange money for chips. And I'll use chips on these tables, so I want to do that. Damn, the paladin is the first one to start gambling. No, that would be inks, but uh, Adriel went faster because she was on uh, Richard's arm. 
like give money away. All right. Um, Where's yeah. Dryland? Or is that that guy down the bottom right? Dryland's the ugly guy. You can tell because okay. of the painting. Yeah. You recognize his face from the... Uh... Was the artist honest? Or did he tell him to... You the know? artist is honest. <laughs> the artist was definitely honest. And he seems to be okay with that, because considering he put it up. Yeah, it's a big painting, too. And it's hanging in the middle of his very garishly decorated um, casino. But yeah, if you want chips, um, the place to go is to is the um, is the pit boss. She's the one who's distributing the chips. All righty, then. Work my way over there. Um, all right. So as you make your way over to um, Pao Ming, she's a she's a very very tall woman. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of stares down um, at you as you approach. Yes. I probably have a, a pre-counted bag of silver. I understand you use chips in this establishment. Or tokens, mm -hmm. you probably call them. Good thing. No, no they're chips. Chip. They, are, they are referred to as chips. Indeed, we do. She takes your bag, um, takes a look inside it, quick count through it all. I don't believe we've met before. Oh, I'm... no. I was just passing through town, and I understood this was the place I used to be. Ah. Well, you are not wrong. I am Pao Ming, head of security around here for Lord Dryland. Adriel Kurum Nash. Pleasure, Adriel. She reaches into a bag um, uh, at her hip um, and pulls out about how much silver are you giving her? Uh, well, based on what's going on at the table, can I guess how much people are generally bringing? Uh, hundred silver. Hundred. I had to beforehand. Okay, she reaches into a bag at her uh, at her waist and pulls out twenty chips and hands them to you. Thank her. She bows her head slightly. She continues to watch you as you uh, move away. Right. Well, I'm going to find a game to play. All right. Um, there's some cards going on. There's some dice. Um, there's what looks there's what looks like a downsized version of roulette going at one of the tables. Um, anything in particular you want to try your hand at? I'm gonna go with dice. All right. Um, how much are you willing to bet? Two chips around. All right. Uh, I don't know any complicated dice games off the top of my head, so uh, roll me a 2d6. That's a good Very one. Good yeah. Um, highest of 2d6 wins. All right. 
So you are two chips down. I don't know if you want to keep betting or not. Um, it's all for a bit. All right. Um, yeah, Ink says you're mingling. The people mostly seem to be pretty engrossed, uh, but you notice that there are a lot of chips on the table. Most people brought a lot more than Adriel. Oh, um, yeah. She knows these kind of places. She does noble, noble stuff. Um, yeah, a couple of people will request, uh, will ask some luck. Um, if you pass near Lord Dryland, he's busy buttering up a pair of merchants. Um, I don't know if you want to talk to him quite yet. Up to you. Um, no, I shall just uh, keep an eye on him a little bit for now. Go right. try to get a sense of what he's talking about. Oh, mix of compliments, cajoling, promises of uh, lower taxes. It's all the stuff they want to hear. Oh, she knows that. <laughs> she knows that. All right. All right. Um, Rich, what are you doing? Probably trying to find somewhere that I could be close to Dryland to see what he's talking about. But yeah, right. it looks like I'm gambling or something. There is, well, you're in luck. There's a card table directly next to where he is currently standing. Then yes, I'd like to go sit there and do a little bit of gambling. But, and, yes. All right. All right. Um... You can pick up, you'll have to pick up chips from Pao Ming. Um, Inks can offer to do that for him. Sure. If it's in with her uh, job. <laughs> Fair. Pao Ming arches an eyebrow at you as you come over. I don't believe we've met, but I may have heard a few things about you. Oh, hopefully I all good things. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> I am Pao Ming, head of security for Lord Dryland. A pleasure, my lady. I'm simply called Noisying so on the stage, but you can call me whatever you'd like. You seem to have made, uh, certainly already made yourself at home here. Will you be staying for long in Yartar? Oh, uh, perhaps another night or so. It depends on what my dear lord. And she kind of gazes over her shoulder towards Rich briefly, returning back with a smile, decides to do. Uh, of course. Your patron, I assume? For the moment. <laughs> I could do worse. Two grins of that. I suppose. This is quite a lovely establishment your lord runs. It certainly is. He does his best to keep it running smoothly. Make sure everyone enjoys themselves. Oh, I certainly know what that's like, and I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm glad. 
I'm just, um, most of the time, though, I'm just here to make sure things stay fair. Well, I can certainly understand that. It seems like you do a lovely job. I haven't heard any bad, bad talk around here. No, you wouldn't. You would not. That is quite a breath of fresh air from some of the places I've been. And I do love that. I suppose I shouldn't keep my lord waiting. Um, can I get some chips? And she'll offer, I guess, probably the same amount that Adriel did at first, maybe a bit more. Of course. Um, yeah, she'll give you the same amount of chips as she gave Adriel. He'll kill up with 20 chips. Probably do an extra uh, 10. Let's go 30. Be a little bit different. 30. All right. Um, Swing with Rich, after all. <laughs> all right. I'm sure you'll have no problem uh, growing that stack of chips. <laughs> well, we'll certainly do our best. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. Just like curtsy and turn, shuffle her way back over. I guess saunter is the right word. I've always pictured inks as a strutter. That actually works as well, too. Um, it's on the hips. All right. Oh, trust me. I know all about it. Uh, Sil, Ox, you two are just ha conversing up in the dining hall? Pretty much. For the moment, okay. enjoying the food and drink. All right. Waiting for the party to ruin everything. It's <laughs> <laughs> so so an opportunity to learn a bit more about Ox. You know, I'm yeah, sure. waiting for everything to go to hell in a handbasket. You know, somehow I'm sure one of them will do it. I don't know who. It was my understanding that Rich made arrangements for uh, them to do it, and we're going to follow their lead. Righto. All right. Um... <laughs> All right, um, so, Rich, you are the one who made the arrangements. What do? You mean, what are the arrangements supposed to do? No, what do you want to do? Do I see anywhere that looks like a place that would be where I want to go to find stuff he would have locked up? Not here. Um, the far end of the ship, at the far end of the cabin, you notice a set of spiral stairs going up. Um, and as you got on, you noticed... Sorry? Bow or stern? Stern. Rear of the uh, room that you're currently in. Behind the golden goose. There. Right, right. In other words, not easy to read. There are stairs down as well at both bow and stern. The dining room is up. Yeah, the dining room is up uh, where Sill and Ox currently are. So then so I'd probably, probably want to go down. 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 No, no, no. Everything that you, sorry, everything that you see right now is on the same deck. Sorry, I totally misunderstood what you meant. Um, so Sill and uh, Sill and Ox are like towards the bow from where you guys are. The, um, but you all are on the same deck right now. There is an upper deck, there is a lower deck. You guys are all on the main deck. 
does it look like there's any like servers or anything like that coming and going from either the top or the bottom? Uh, there is a server. There are a couple of servers going up to the top. And is there possibly somewhere indiscreet looking that I might be able to sneak off and cast a spell? Um, yeah, so there's a whole line of, uh, there's like a, you can just slip like out of the doors of the cabins and go onto the deck. But where's the bathroom? Honestly, there is not one on this map. If anybody... It, it would be right. in one of the smaller cabins. Yeah. It, Probably. It, 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 might, on, it would be on the bottom deck. Well, really just the back. Somewhere near the stern. Yeah. Top or bottom. But, no, there's a, there's a spot in the bottom that would make sense for it to be. But there's... There is not a bathroom explicitly mapped on the... Uh, I mean, bathroom, uh, it's a chamber pot in a closet. Yeah, that's a, all we probably need at this point, but... I'd just like to ask one of the people, one of the uh, employees, where where the bathroom is, and then head that way. All right. Um, he'll tell you it's on the bottom deck. So go down the stairs at the bow... And just head into uh, fuck. What the fuck are you doing? I didn't do anything. Bang, bang. No, no, no. Uh, roll twenty. Head into like one of these rooms. Was I able to like see past the curtain at all as I was walking by? Which curtain? Um, the one down. Oh, you walked through the upper curtain. The one down here, you could definitely see through. Um, it's just it's a lot of people rowing. rowing. Yeah, it's just the rowers. Yeah, all that's really down here is a uh, shit ton of rowers, a couple of cabins, and the bathroom. Well, I'll hang out here for a little bit, just to at least make it seem like... Actually, um, as soon as I get in, out of sight, I'll cast Invisibility and then go upstairs. Okay. All the way upstairs? Yes. Okay. Um, does any of the rest of the party know you're doing this? No. Well, I probably would have told Inks I'm doing it on the way up. Or let her know that that was what I was planning on doing. If that was the case, she might have uh, let him know to be careful because of the mage. Probably has a few things up her sleeve if she's trying to keep the place fair. Right, I would figure she would do that, especially on the gam in the gambling area but maybe not so much in some of the other areas. That's true. Just be careful <laughs> that if he has somebody there, he might have other mages elsewhere. True enough, which is why I was going to also be stealthing all of this after doing the uh, invisibility. All right, roll me a quick stealth check, then. With advantage, because you're invisible. Okay, nailed it. Um, yeah, so you make your way upstairs, um, and you find yourself in what looks to be a dancing area. Um, it's a few people dancing, a small band playing slow music. Pair of doors to the um, to the deck on either side. Uh, 
a couple of servers circulating with drinks as well. Well, I would start going towards somewhere that looks like I shouldn't be. All right. Well, the curtain in the uh, top right corner. Yes, then that way. While stinking. All right. So there are three doors along this hallway um, and a trio. Sorry, there's three doors along this hallway to your left, uh, four along the hallway to the right that you can probably figure would lead to the deck. Um, which door? Will you pick door number one, door number two, or door number three? Whichever door you pick, switch after he shows you the vote. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, can I take a moment and try to listen to see if I hear anybody in any of the rooms? You absolutely can. Um, all right. Which door are you listening at? Um, I would start with the one I'm next to, which I guess is the bottom one. Or did I come in from the top? You would have come in from the bottom. Um, so I should mark these in some way. Um, you can see the doors, right? Mm hmm OK. Um, so yeah, the bottom one, uh, it seems pretty quiet. You hear like a faint bubbling occasionally, uh, but besides that, nothing. I can't do like minor illusion to make it look like the door is see through, can I? No, no, you cannot make the door see through by minor illusion. Worth a shot. See, what you do is you make a minor illusion of the door, and then you open the door. Yes, that you could do. That is a good call, and yes, I would like to do that. Assuming the door opens towards you. Um. Actually, no, it would probably open inward, because that's a small-ass hallway. I, was, I still want to do it anyways. <laughs> hey. <laughs> really um, hope you don't smack somebody with it. Well, well I understand I mean, that's the risk, but the other risk is walks down the hallway, and so now we have a door that at least looks like it's still closed. All right. The door uh, appears to be locked. Um, I guess I would try to pick it. Because I do have proficiency with these tools. All right, roll them. Uh, what do I roll? Dex plus proficiency. Slide a hand or just straight dex? For these tools, I mean. So it's not sleight of hand, it's its own. own. These tools is like a tool proficiency. So it's you're proficient with the tool. So you add proficient, so dex plus uh, your proficiency bonus. Okay. Basically, any dex skill your profession didn't count as a. Yeah, but it's not a skill proficiency; it's its own thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a right. Got it. It just it's comes out exactly yeah, makes the sense. same way. It's probably the most useful tool proficiency, but it is still a tool proficiency. Okay, so this should be the same thing then. So I'll just roll that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you pick the shit out of that lock. It's not a very good lock, but it is a lock. Um, so the door opens. Um, here's that the bubbling that you hear is, in fact, an aquarium um, in the middle of the room on top of a desk. Uh, it's got a little octopus in it. Um, 
or actually a decent sized octopus in it. Um, it has a, a little dead man's chest sitting inside of it. It's got like a little fake castle in it even. Um, <laughs> the rest of the room is kind of like awfully decorated though. Like it's got like big ugly purple velvet curtains and weird smelling scented candles everywhere. Um, so yeah, uh, the cor in the corner there's a desk. Um, there's a hammock in which it looks like somebody sleeps um, and a small table that's got a wine decanter and a goblet on it. So I guess I would kind of look in the aquarium to see if there's anything else more interesting in it, but then kind of search the rest of the room. Okay. Um, so there's a table underneath the... Uh, the table underneath the aquarium has a small shelf built into it that has a small chest. Uh resting on it. Uh, I would search that chest for traps and then try to open it. All right. Um, perception check for traps. Yeah. One sec. Okay. Um, you do not find any traps while you are searching it. Roll your uh, roll to try and open it. <laughs> yep, that'll open it. Uh, that will certainly open it. Um, unfortunately, you missed a trap when you were checking. Um, roll a con save for me as a small poison needle um, extends from the, uh, not quite good enough. You are unfortunately poisoned for the next hour. The kind of poison that gives you disadvantage on ability checks. <sighs> well, looks like someone's borrowing my thing later. I'm assuming cure and or healing word will not fix that. You also take four damage. Um, no, that's the kind of thing you'd need a restoration for. I can prepare that spell. Okay. Um, like it's it's only it only lasts for an hour. Um, but. Once you are, you op you do open the chest. Um, so inside the chest, you find um, you find a pouch containing four hundred and fifty gold. You find um, a second pouch containing nine fifty gold gemstones, which I believe is another four hundred and fifty. Um, and you also find a small book. Um, it has the symbol of a kraken on the front of it. The little black book. Uh, is there anything good inside the book? Um, when you open it, it looks like gibberish. I'll throw that in my pocket for later. Okay. Are you taking the money too? Of course. I mean, I got stabbed for it, or I got poisoned for it, so might as well. That's true. All right. Um,.
y'all who are downstairs, um, the um, words, Lord Dryland is kind of. He's been he's been busy cajoling people this entire night, um, as you guys have been listening in on him. Um, eventually, however, he starts clutching his head. Um, he seems to be in a decent amount of pain. Roll perception for me. Anybody who's watching our good Lord Dryland. I suppose eventually we would have made our way into the hall of gambling. Yeah, my oh, wow. Yeah, probably. Um, so this is like right there, so it kind of helps. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, Adriel and Ox, you don't pick up on this, but Inks and Siliqui, um, the two of you notice that uh, there's a little bit of blood dripping from uh, from the good lord's nose. Inks is gonna immediately go into overdrive on her, uh, dr the, like her dramatics, uh, like, uh, and go. Are you all right, my most gracious lord? Oh no, no, no! I'm, I'm fine. It's uh, an unfortunate thing that happens every once in a while. I just need a bit of rest. He's kind of waving you off a bit. Oh. Are you most certain I could bring you some water? Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary. I'll just... I'll be heading back upstairs now, I think. I, I need to rest. Oh, are you certain? Are you certain there's no doctors down here? Is there a doctor that might be able to help our gracious lord? He was. You are bleeding, my lord. Oh, it's it's no. It is no problem. I should a gesture over to Adriel when set to his healing. Work my way over. All right. Um, oh, no, no, no. That's quite not necessary. I, I should really be going. I just need rest, is all. He starts moving uh, towards the back. He's not moving very quickly. He is mostly just kind of clutching at his head. But he is moving. Uh, I'm looking at... What's her name? Is... What's she doing before I uh, try and chase after anybody? She's staring. She's kind of giving the death glare to Inks. Um, but she's not moving towards... Uh, she's not moving towards Dryland. Us or Dryland. Okay. Um, nevertheless, I'm probably going to let it go then. All right. I mean, it's obviously concerned. Hanks is still being very concerned and kind of like doing the uh, the small talk with the nobles nearby. Like, does this happen often? Will he be all right? It's completely uh, in character. One or two of them has one or two of the nobles around have seen him before. Has seen this happen before. Um, normally, he just goes upstairs for a little while and. Um, leaves it. They leave it. You know, he's the he's the host. He can do as he pleases. Let's do the sort of normal, rational easing of the expression at that. I certainly hope everything's all right. So Rich, what are you doing? Um, I'm since I searched the room, I would exit shutting the door behind me, 
dropping that minor illusion and going to the next room. Okay. Um, go ahead and listen at the door. Oh, damn. Yeah, you hear somebody snoring in there. I'll go to the next room. Go ahead. You also hear somebody snoring in there. Do I uh, see anything from, to the north? And behind from the behind curtain? the curtain there, mostly you just hear what sounds like a bunch of sailors shooting the ship. Um, they're, you know, they're bitching about their boss um, and how how dumb he is sometimes. Um, they're talking about some of the uh, good-looking ladies that they saw downstairs. Um, They're shooting the shit. I'd go to start making my way back down to the bathroom. All right. Uh, give me a quick stealth check. Yeah, bathroom. Eh. Uh, there are also a couple of... That I was going to say, as I go down those stairs, I would actually try to listen to see if someone's coming up because it doesn't look like there's a lot of room there. Yeah. Uh, you do, in fact, hear Lord Dryland coming up. Um, he stomps past the people who are dancing and goes into the room that you just uh, left. So, you, there are a couple of loud noises, but you're, uh, you're sneaking in a frickin' dancing hall. Um, nobody spots you. Especially since he's invisible, right? Yeah, that too. Um, the poison's, you know, not helping things, but you make it back to the bathroom without any trouble. Drop the invisibility and then head back up to the gambling hall to find inks and everyone. All right. So go ahead and rejoin the rest of the party. Once he gets there, inks will uh, subtle, subtly message him with what happened down there. Yeah, at that point, Inks would be playing a card game. Try to just keep up uh, appearances. All right. Yeah, I would spend some time gambling at this point. All right. Um, Still, uh, Ox, what are you guys doing? While everyone else gambles. Being pretty. I mean, that's kind of your base state right now. Yeah. No, you, you succeed. What do you mean right now? <laughs> Normally you weren't quite so polished. Fair. Yeah, you succeed. Everybody wants to come over and meet you and talk to you, and try and figure out what the hell you are. You cause uh, you cause quite the stir. <laughs> well, everyone's gathered around uh, Adriel. Richard, would you have mentioned what happened to you up there, like with the rest of the message, where no one else could hear you? 
Um, if I thought I could do it easily, I would mention that it, I would basically just say up success time to go, but you know, we need to not do so quickly, too quickly. Mm -hmm. Would you have mentioned the poison? Would I know I'm actually poisoned or would I just feel the prick and then be like, well, I feel like shit now. Well, I mean, yeah, that you, you can generally guess that you probably got poisoned if you suddenly feel like shit ever getting pricked with something. Yeah. Yeah, you could you could make the connection. It's not a hard connection to make. I wouldn't say anything yet. Because hmm. it's not important yet. Well, we could make it less important if you didn't. That's all I'm saying. And I can remove poison with lay on hands. Yes. Right, but did we actually walk in together or make it look like we know each other? That's why I'm saying Inks could at least do something about it. Yeah, I don't think directly. No, we came in in separate groups. Yeah. Uh, Ox and Syl came in together. Rich and uh, Inks came in together. And Adriel was all on her lonesome. I guess, could I make a perception check to see if he looks weird? <laughs> Mm. Sure, go ahead. It doesn't look too out of the ordinary. Maybe a bit paler than usual, but... Okay. Uh, Rich? Yes? Your friend Jane Rowe um, taps you on the shoulder. How are you uh, enjoying the party? It's going pretty well so far. How about yourself? Not bad, not bad. Our, uh, our little surprise for the Lord is going to be happening in a little bit. Have you oh. done what you needed to do? Yes, how... Can you give me a... Okay, yes, yes. We... I have. Good. Good. I'll need to... Uh... I'm going to go stay with it just to make sure that everything goes according to plan. Um, otherwise, in about 20 minutes or so, be ready to move. Okay. I'm going to make the motion to let everybody know time to go now, like, you know, GTFO. I'm sure we had some kind of pre-arranged signal for that. Though, so could, uh... Yeah, probably. Would, would I have had to roll something different for, like, playing some of the other games? Because I at least wanted to, uh... I oh, to play cards? Play. Yeah. Um, are you proficient with cards? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, give me straight... Play the people, not the game. <laughs> I mean, if you want to count cards, then uh, give me ints. Otherwise, if you want to just bluff the shit out of people, give me a deception check. Oh, I can bluff the shit out of people. Go for it. There's just some... Yeah. Really? Yeah, Is this happening bef for... before the GTFO or, in, or after? This was like in the between time while you were still gone. She was doing some gambling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they uh, they call your bluff. The table calls your bluff. You're down. We'll go with two chips. Okay. Do that a couple times. Alright. They call you once. You... Bluff the shit out of them another time. 
So, we'll call that neutral. You come out with about the same amount of money as you went in with. <laughs> ah, well. Um... You win some, you lose some. Mm -hmm. If uh, Rich was gesturing that it's about time to head out, she would at least uh, do what would be natural and cash in her chips. Of course. Um, Here's their chips at this point. I don't know if Richard did anything in the meanwhile. Yeah. Pao Ming, um, as you come over, Pao Ming thanks you for coming. Um, she gives you your uh, the monetary value of your chips. As a goodwill gesture, she hands each of you um, a chip. Um, it's emblazoned with the uh, with the golden goose on it, and says, "Just a little token to remember us by." The second we get outside, I'm going to ask Adriel to detect magic on these damn things. Thanks. Well, thank her very much, and I uh, ask her to give her regards to her lord and hope they feels better. When you say each of you, I'm guessing each of the gamblers. Yeah. Yeah, I mostly uh, just Noted. watch people. Honestly, I'd probably surreptitiously cast it on it as soon as I'm like in that yeah. hallway there. There is no magic on these. They're just gambling chips. Okay. They are marked with the sign of the golden goose. Um. But yeah, I don't. Yeah. All right. Do you want to stay and see what the surprise is? No. I kind of do, but from a concealed position, out of the way. As I recall, the we word was eat. 20 minutes and be ready to GTFO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could at least, like, be in the dining area eating and being close to the exit from, like, right beforehand. Good point. Nope, nope. I want to be as far away from this as possible. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, Edrell would also want to be away from it. All right. So the question is, I suppose, where counts is away? Off the boat. I'm tempted to like if there's a, a a pub on the dock where we can see the boat. Yeah, there, there would be. That's a fantastic idea. I love this idea. Let's go with this idea. <laughs> Some outdoor street drink. <laughs> how far away is it though? Um, so you see how there's that dock that's sitting right next to it, right next to the main deck of the boat. Nope. We blocked up it to get in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one. Oh, that deck. Uh, it's basically right off the bottom of the uh, of the map. Can we get further away and still see the boat? Yeah, next bar down. All right. I'm Side looking for like thirty to fifty meters. Sidewalk seats. Yeah. I mean, it's a dock. I'm sure there's another bar. <laughs> I want to be able to see the chaos. We need all the dockside bars. All right, yeah, you can uh, you can find a bar within within view of the boat that isn't within this danger zone that you've created. Well, we don't know what the danger zone is. We don't know what the danger. It'd be is. a line of sight, not in blast radius. I mean, well, not only that, but if we're far enough away, then there's at least some plausible deniability we had nothing to do with it. You're in the town. And we left what? early enough that it's not like we left immediately before the thing happened. Because <laughs> that's hella that... suspicious. Yeah, I'm also thinking we would have spaced our leaving to like ink sleeves. I'm like, all right, I'll wait five minutes. Then I go or something like that. All right. Yeah, makes sense. The we people, also the people probably... that came in together left together. Yeah, but let's also not all end up at the same bar. That's true. Good idea. Yeah, there's enough bars. You did specify that the surprise had to be non-lethal. Yeah, that's true. For so, him. Yeah. I mean, 
that leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Like it could be very <laughs> lethal to the entire boat. Yet everyone gets off safely. On the boat. Yep. And he can Anyhow. still get off safely, but the boat sinks. I mean, there's a lot of wiggle room in that interpretation. Fair. Yeah. Um, so, from your various bars around the dock, you hear... Um, it starts with a lot of yelling from the boat. Uh, mostly in the form of muffled expletives from the lower deck. Um, you guys are so paranoid. Um, eventually, the... Excuse me. Eventually, um, the main deck of the boat begins to flash with multicolored lights. Um... And you start hearing these very loud popping noises, along with a couple of bangs. Um, after a couple more minutes of that, the boat itself starts shooting fireworks uh, out of various doors um, and from the top floor. The boat is just venting uh, multicolored fireworks um, everywhere. You can also see, however, numerous small fires um, that have started all that have started all over the boat, um, and there are a lot of very panicked guests trying to leave right now. So fireworks, but they're burning the boat down. Extreme fireworks. And it's not so much that they're burning the boat down as much as they didn't spend any effort to not burn the boat down, it looks like. Yeah. If a, I'm next a, to anybody, we're starting taking bets on whether or not the boat actually burns down and sinks. Because, <laughs> you know, it's in the water, but they use tar to waterproof them, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Inks Inc is doing what probably everybody else in the bar is doing. Which is kind of half freaking out and half being like, oh. Just to keep up appearances, obviously. And I assume at least she and Rich chose a pretty well-to-do bar because of how they were dressed. Fair enough. This is basically, like, the dock that you're around is basically a marina. Um, there's there's a couple of nice bars around that you can, that are within viewing distance. Um, yeah, there's a decent pillar of smoke coming up from the boat. Um, Rich, Jane wanders by you, um, carrying... A bag that was a little bit he that looks a bit a little bit more stuffed than it was last time she saw you saw her, and gives you a wink as she heads off into town. And I'll give her an almost imperceptible nod. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, Adriel, you can absolutely do that. Um, you dress down. You're no longer in your fancy silk, green and gold. Um, yeah, I'm probably look, in like brown leathers or whatever. Yeah, you're a bit more casual. You know, I don't quite uh, look like me. Yeah, I was about to say you look like a working girl, but then I realized that was not the right phrase. No, that means something different from what you thought. <laughs> I, I, yeah, yes, yes, I, I know. Especially on a dock. <laughs> Oh my yes. So uh I think I was like I, a sailor. You're just looking yeah, for some able seamen. Oh dear God. Flynn, why? Do you not know me by now? I should. In any case, I think that I'm going to act like a good person and earn myself some brownie points. I think that our mission of embarrassing him has been accomplished, yes? Absolutely. His boat is burning down and you just robbed all his shit, basically. I would go with what you're doing, but I have nothing to help with. So, 
Yeah, nope. I mean, technically, we didn't really do any of it, did we? I mean, I guess I an mean, ice storm might be able to... You stole, well, you that's stole a, his shit. That's, oh, that's basically true. what I'm about to do, is sleet storm his boat. Which is, you know, going to hose any <laughs> remaining nobles and making them invisible, but I'm protecting them. <laughs> Dis- disrupting the fires. Just I mean, make yeah, sure you, you yell, I'm that. here to help. Have you ever tried to walk in a I sleep storm? The forest, I'd be here to help. <laughs> like a regular, like, rain. Kind of <laughs> you're so dressed like a fucking noble when you're saying this, too. All right. Yeah, you can you can cast your sleep storm. Um, so uh, most of the fires on deck are put out. But the ground under which all of our noble, all of your noble, well, actually, they're not your friends. All the other, all of the nobles that were on board. Well, not anymore. Yeah. No, no, they um, don't know. They don't know. The I ground was upon their which life. the ground and deck upon which they are all running is suddenly sleety and very slippery. So they all. <laughs> Nobles start tumbling like dominoes. Nobody's the important nobody's... thing is they're not on fire. Yeah, Angst is <laughs> like the over dramatic like hand co- hand covering mouth while holding nobody's her pipe. Seriously hurt, but there's a lot of bruised pride going along, going around. You know, it's not often that I get to do the right thing and have it add to the ongoing chaos that we paid for. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity. Not existing completely in character to avoid any suspicion at all. To be fair, what I'm doing is also completely in character. I'm from the forest. I'm here to help. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. You're not on fire. It's okay. I'm sure when they have time to consider it, some bruised pride is a small price to pay for not having scars for the rest of their lives if they live. Oh, on their pretty, pretty so faces. Hurt. There are quite a few of them are in the the river right now, I'm sure. Probably. The sailors will uh, fish them out, though. Actually, once that starts happening, I'll probably help with that. Uh, 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 excuse me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, ship more than mildly burnt, lots of lovely fireworks for everyone to enjoy, Uh, bruised nobles, a few very wet, gold stolen, freaky books stolen. Oh, and Angus has had the inspiration for the Benny Hill theme. Hooray! (laughs) Oh, God. Please use your powers only for good. (laughs) <laughs> all, in all, make no success, all in all, successful party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's not a party till the cops get called. Too late. Isn't this how we all met? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Oh, it's, so n- a, it's so nostalgic. You all met the party that got fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Just like old times. Good times, good times. All right. What do now after you've ruined uh, Lord Dryland's party? I think we stay low for the night and then, like, yeah, yeah get the get any information to what's her, what's her face in the morning before we have to leave and find out what she thinks of our embarrassment. Well, I'd also ask if anybody can read the book, and if not, mm. probably throw it in the bag of holding for safekeeping. 
No magic on the book. Um, anybody who wants to try and read the book, um, while you are lying low, it'll take you a bit of time. Roll in. Roll an intelligence check. Cat. The cat cannot help you. Um, <laughs> Rich, this is something wow. you. You might have encountered something similar to this before. So make your check with advantage. So 11. <laughs> uh, Syl and, uh, Syl and Adriel, do you want to try this? This will probably be the next day, but let me roll it. This won't be humorous. <laughs> Sigh. Wow. We don't know. I mean, that might be something to show to the uh, the Lord, who might be able to have somebody who can read it. Right, but yeah, I would always I rather know what I'm handing to someone else before I go handing some random okay. book away. Uh, can we line up and be pretty at the book? Will that work? <laughs> yeah. I'm good at that. So yes, can we charm the book? The book is an inanimate object. You cannot be pretty at it. I mean, we can. We just might not do anything. Only the, there has only been the one sentient book so far. And it has not appeared in this campaign yet. No, don't say yet. It might not. Poor, poor Ave. Nah, it's okay, though. It was just, it was just the fake whispers. Sure. Ava's, 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 Ava's being a, uh, is atoning for his sins. Fake, yeah. Um, anyhow, anybody who rolled above a 10, um, you recognize this, it's, like, it's common lettering, but it looks like gibberish. Um, you would recognize it as probably some sort of cipher. Right, so it's in some kind of code. Yeah, I, I got heck, no heck, prayer to the, uh, on my own. Talk to the Yartar. Talk to the Yartar. You want to go barge in on the Water Baron at like late at night? No, not, not that. I meant like the the hand yeah. ladies. Oh yeah, okay, not a bad idea. Um, yeah, you can go and talk talk to uh, Jane Rowe. You'll find her at the uh, Hand of Yartar building that you guys found before. Um, what do you tell her about the book? Can you break the cipher? And that's about it. Uh, she'll take the book, have a read over it. Don't think so. It's, uh, it's probably, do you get this from, uh, from Dryland? Does it matter? Might. We've, uh, the Brotherhood's used ciphers before. Most of the time it's a one-time pad kind of deal. Balls. Yeah. Don't suppose you found a pad in there with it? Did I see anything in the room that might look like a one t like a a book that could have been used? No. This was the only book in there. Did I see anything in the aquarium? Uh, aquarium just had the, uh, it had the octopus, it had the chest, and the castle.
Like, uh, the Waterdeep Baron, or not Waterdeep, uh, the Baron didn't really, uh, didn't actually say find evidence of him being the Brotherhood. They all, everyone knows this, right? It's just kind of like underhanded common knowledge. Yeah, they wanted, she wanted, she wanted you to disrupt him. One way of doing that would have been to, uh, to find evidence, but, uh, this is at least evidence that he's with them, but that's already known. Yeah, fucking his uh, shit up will definitely disrupt him, though. And that is what you did. So yeah, I think we need to crash for now and then pass off uh, info tomorrow. And obviously give a little, uh, um, would be the right word for a good note to the Baron, uh, for the hand. All right. All right, so crash for the night. Talk to the Baron in the morning. Sounds good, Lan. Yeah, the question is, do we tell her about the book or not? That is uh, that is up to you. I have a feeling, and I don't have strong the right or wrong idea, but if you tell her about the book, she's going to want to keep it to crack the code herself. Right, which is why I'm wondering if we tell her about it, because then we at least get... I mean, she may know the code, but... And she would also, if she doesn't know the code, she'd be able to put more resources towards cracking it right away than we probably could. However, that also means that we'll probably never know what it actually says. Right. Up to you. Adriel has no feelings on the matter. Yeah, as interesting as it is, it's, if it's more profitable just to give it to her, that's probably the better thing to do. Get some favors in with the uh, lord of this town. I mean, I think we already accomplished that, though. <laughs> exactly, so anything else is just bonus. So, um, in the morning, you can go speak to the water baron. Um, the guards recognize you this time, um, wave you directly in. She stands from behind her desk and extends a hand across it to you. I assume that the... Uh, the incident last night was your doing. Well done. Thank you. It's not a decisive blow, but what you did to Dryland last night was a humiliation, to say the least. It will keep him off balance for a long, long time. I can work with that. That's a question. Have you ever heard of the uh, Brotherhood using any kind of codes? Sometimes. Why? Did you find one? Well, I may have found something, but I'm not sure what it, it is quite yet. Um, 
Well. Most of the time, what we've known them to use um, one-time pads for their ciphers. Um, where the decryption pad for that one might be, I'm not sure. The, well, I've told you before, I don't know if you have time now, but I've told you before that the, uh, we've always suspected the disciples and the brotherhood of having ties. If you didn't find the pad with, uh, with Dryland, Disciples of the Yellow King might not be a bad place to look. So we can come back for that later. Later, but we're here now. And the boat's leaving today. All right, well, we will be back at some point in the future to do some more here. Don't forget to give a good nod to the hand. Yes, and, well, yeah, and definitely talk up the Yartar and how they helped us, and we're key in that. Did they? Interesting. I'll have to have a talk with them. Perhaps they can be useful in the future. Thank you. As for you all, she uh, tosses a thick sack of gold um, at Rich. Here is uh, your payment in gold. And no, Harper, that the Lord's Alliance is in your debt for this one. Wait, we're in debt to ourselves? I don't think you have admitted you were Lord's Alliance to her. She thinks you're a Harper. Yep, let's go with that. Do you need any favor? Ask, and I will do my best to help you. She shakes your hand. All right, sounds great. Appreciate it. It's like pleasure doing business with you and then just saunter out. Yeah. She nods, sits back down. So what was in the bag? Oh, the bag contains uh two and a half thousand gold pieces. Hello. Nice. Surprise. So I guess that's like 500 each. Sounds about right. And then we can do the stuff found on the boat. We can split up 600. Uh, the boat had 900 gold worth of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's 180 each. The... Because it costs three hundred to pay the Yartar, right? Oh, right, right. Uh -huh. That's one twenty each plus five hundred, so six twenty each.
That looked great. All right. Yeah. Um, so after this, you guys have about an hour before your ship leaves. Um, you've basically hired on as you were. I don't know. What do you want to travel as? Defenses for the ship. Uh, for the I was going to say just travelers. Okay. If you're travelers, uh, you're pay. If you're mercenary, you get paid. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if if anything that pops up, we're gonna fight it anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. Mercenary musician. Oh, both good on both ship. Good on ship. Yeah. Um, they'll pay you guys uh, fifteen gold a head for e fifteen gold for each of to each of you uh, for the journey if you hire on as guards. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So, uh, you all, you all head down to the docks. Um, you find yourselves at a wonderful boat called the Wonderful Fanny. The one now. Oh, they've met me. Um, the wonderful Fanny is the uh, boat that you'll be taking downstream. It's owned by um, one of the mer local merchant families, the Condell family. Um, <laughs> uh, what a... Um, The first time a crew member hears you crack up about the name, they explain that it was named after a woman named uh, Francesca. So what you're saying is that this woman, Francesca, had a wonderful family? <laughs> sure. Like, legendarily so? <laughs> I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, owned by the Condell family, um, the captain is more than happy to have a bunch of adventurers aboard, especially um, given how dangerous the roads, given how dangerous uh, things have gotten lately. Yeah, we did finally oh, yeah. line that thing. Yes, you did. And I recall the druid was all for it last time. Only if we note down where we are when we do it. All for which now? Yeah, we have to know exactly where it went. Uh, but if we're dumping in the river, we don't know exactly where it is. I mean, is there fun. some kind of a uh, note? What what it was close to? Like some kind of marker Better question. or whatever. Do we know how deep the river is before we go dumping off a giant slab into it? And have we finished wrapping it in lead? You have finished wrapping it in lead. Okay. Do yes, I know we can about double check that on the way out on the environment? Anyway. The Romans used to boil wine in lead jars because it made the wine taste better. <laughs> yeah, lead poisoning. Right. Tastes Apparently, good. Apparently, it, it's sweet the wine. Well, this is a different world from Rome, so am I aware of the danger of uh, lead contamination? Um, make a medicine check. Just, uh, so, just think of the lead poisoning as another experience for enjoyment. You're probably aware of lead, of how delicious lead can be, and how not delicious it is for your nervous system and brain and a lot of things in your body. Well, I mean, honestly, it stops mattering after a little while. Mm -hmm. 
we should probably find something else to do with it. At least while it's shielded, it won't be detectable and uh Okay. Perhaps a conclave of druids will know somewhere to put it. Where it can't hurt anyone or the environment. Okay. Alright. Um I love that we're just showing up with this thing as luggage. Oh, and this too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some weird looks. But uh, the crew of the Fanny have seen some weirder things in their day. Oh, I bet. I'm sure the men who see to the Fanny have seen lots of things. You assume correctly. But uh, you set off down the Desaran River to um, to make your way all the way to Shadowtop Cathedral. That was a nice night. Yeah. Um, I think this is where we're going to call it for the night. Um, just because there's, we don't have that, we, we don't have much time left. Uh, there's no sense in starting up in a new city tonight. Um, there, the ship isn't, the Fanny is going to be making a stop in Nonar's Hold, um, just to drop some supplies off. If you wanted to stop off there, that would be the time, but. Shadowtop Cathedral is the main destination here. I see a reason to stop on the way. Yeah. Fair. Um, yeah. So, congratulations. You fucked up Yartar. Or one particular lord in Yartar. Um, okay, he's kind of ugly. <laughs> he is extremely ugly. His portrait, his portrait has him carrying an octopus on his shoulder, like his actual like token. It has him carrying an octopus. It's great. The best. Yeah. It's ugly as fuck. Well, he was dealing with the Brotherhood, so he couldn't have been a decent, uh, a good person at all. And he just suddenly <laughs> happened to get headaches as soon as you stole shit. That's not strange. I actually thought that's what the uh, the hand was doing. Maybe we should grab the token lid. That was only the one book. You scanned the book for magic. It's not magical. That doesn't prevent it from being the focus of a locate spell. True. I'm sure we have a little bit left over lead. <laughs> well, if they did that, wouldn't, wouldn't I mean, they get whatever interdimensional plane it's existing on right now? That's true. I think that actually uh, keeps it away from locate. I'm pretty sure locate object is plane specific. Yeah, locate object also requires you to be within a mile. Or a thousand feet, actually. Sorry, I mixed it up. Yeah. Hell, you could even just stick it in with the uh, with the adamantine chunk you have. It fit. We're gonna end up with this huge ball of uh, horrible things that we're protecting the world from. <laughs> <laughs> the katamari it's the of lead ball. Yes, exactly. Category of I, things. Honestly, at this rate, you may well. Like the most Love bizarre it. katamati, samachi orb. La 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 la. The storm huge lead spear. <laughs> Roll it at people that would annoy us. <laughs> Roll the ball of eldritch awful things. Are <laughs> you? How else do you beat the big bad? I, given that, eh, 
I don't know. I don't know. Throw maybe something by, worse at it. Maybe by being pretty at it. Hasn't I stopped so. us before. I mean, if that's how we beat the big bad, we got this in the bag. We were just too pretty to die. We'll see. We'll see. I don't. I don't know if the big bad will uh, is susceptible to prettiness. We'll see. If it isn't, I will it's say though, wrong. That whole plan and execution and whatnot went smooth as fuck. Just pointing it out. It kind of did. It And I'm sure we just jinxed ourselves with that, but... I don't know what you're talking about. Of course. Yeah. So, uh, thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Anything? Good times. Indeed. Thank you for running. Exactly. Um. Yeah, speaking of, how how's your stuff going to be? Oh, good. Um, hardest one was today, so mostly done. Uh, next week I have to get ready for competition, so we probably won't be playing. Uh, the week after that, I will... I'm not sure if we'll be back yet. We're going out of province for it, so... What kind of competition? Um, aerial robotics? Sweet. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it's uh, basically the idea is it's it's based around like mapping nesting locations for birds. So we have to identify um, like a bunch of different kinds of bird nests and bird types from the air and uh, steal eggs from their nests. It's a competition. Wow. It is a competition. Huh. <laughs> they're, not actual, they're not actual birds. <laughs> I feel obliged. Okay, to good that. to know. I don't not, know that. not the least of which, because we're using geese for this competition, and geese would just fuck up everything. That's By true. everything, you mean you. They would fuck you up in a heartbeat. Geese are the it doesn't worst even mean if you're using a drone or something like that. They would still find you and fuck you up. Yes. They're the worst fucking birds in the world. I hate them so Stole much. my friend's dollar once. What? I have seen geese what, attack people. Yes. The worst I, birds in the world. I, I'm, I'm split on that because they're seagulls. They're just, just annoying rats wings. with wings. Mm. Yeah. Geese, geese will, They're geese like will bigger pigeons. But the other thing is, apparently, hit. and I haven't dealt with it personally, but apparently a swan is like a Canada goose, but stronger. Oh, yeah. That, the seagull that, has that, never that. mugged me. I have heard, Seagulls have totally mugged me. I have heard allegedly that rowing teams will cancel practice if there is a swan in the river. Because they don't want to fuck, fuck that noise. I don't know how true that is, but... I know that swans can be strong enough to break your arm. Yeah. Those fuckers. Birds are just the worst. Anyhow. Fuck birds, TLDR. Um, <laughs> That's why my friend's LARP group is all their characters are named after birds. <laughs> Disgusting. Um, anyhow, nomination. That's a thing that we should also do. Sill is up, I believe. Mm -hmm. it is, yeah. Yeah, it is me.
And really, I think that Rich was up for up at the most risk and really did the most to get things going. So, yes, for well, congratulations, Rich. Um, yeah, I will, uh, as soon as I sort all my shit out and get it in a pile and, um, figure out whatever it is and what I've got, I will let you all know. You get your shit together. You put it in a box. <laughs> yeah, I will, uh, I will let you all know, uh, for dates. Yeah. I will see you whenever we play next. Cool. Cool. All right. Have a good, have a good week. week. Yep. Do good at your contest. Yes. You. Good luck. Thanks. Right. Kick ass up. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. See you. Later. Good night, everybody. See ya.